Hi, everybody. How are you? God bless you. It's good to be with you today on this great day that the Lord has made, right? Are you glad you're in it? I'm glad you're in it. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. Father, we thank you for your word that is able to save us, save our souls, change us, mold us, shape us into the image of your son. We thank you for your word that is everything to us. It is appropriate for every situation, every time, every season, every era. And we just thank you for it, God. We thank you that your word never goes out of style, that it's always on point and always on time. Father, bless your word. Anoint me and anoint your people under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, I just want to share a, a quick word with you today regarding uh, being uh, discouragement. And uh, just to encourage you not to be discouraged in these days. And the reason why I wanted to share this is because um, uh, I've been hearing a lot of things. I mean, we've watched, we, we're watching what's happening in our nation and happening in the world. Uh, but even as, uh, as the days go by, um, you know, we are seeing things and hearing things and, um, you know, and they just, sometimes things can just seem to be worse and worse. But I just wanted to encourage you today. Um, I, um, I personally uh, choose to believe God uh, God is my hero. Jesus is my hero. Um, he, uh, he's my, he's my rescuer. There's, uh, nothing that he hasn't planned and purposed and provided for me. And I know that God is a good God as you, as I know, you know, that God is a good God. He's, he's good all the time. Even when bad is happening all around us, God is a good God, and we have to have faith in that. We have to believe in that. And he's a loving God. Look, all that he went through to save us, come on now. He's not going to just leave us out to dry or hang us out to dry. He's got a plan, and he has a purpose. And so I, I, I thank him because he's a God of hope, um, and we can trust him with everything that we have and all that we are. And so I just want to uh, share some scriptures with you. Um, again, I don't want you to be discouraged. I know I've been challenged, um, you know, uh, but I don't believe this. these are the last days, or, or should I say this? I don't believe that God is, is returning. I don't believe that Jesus is returning for us. Number one, uh, because it looks like the perfect time for him to return because of all what's going on. But that's not what the scriptures say. The scriptures say that only the father knows when Jesus is returning. Uh, it's just that right now, maybe some Christians, they want to pack their bags and they want Jesus to come rescue us, but Jesus isn't going to come rescue us. Jesus is coming back for a church without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. He's not coming for back for a, a, a powerless, don't know what's going on church. And we are just not at the height of, of uh, what the church of Jesus Christ should look like. And so I don't believe he's coming back. I believe that, uh, again, we're believing God that the king of glory is stepping in that God is going to restore justice to our nation because it needs to be restored. Justice has been lost because our, our nation is not uh, operating off of the principles of God, the plan of God, the love of God, or the justice of God. But God wants to make that happen. Amen? Amen. I believe that God doesn't want us running away from our problems. He wants us to, to uh, overcome our problems. He wants us to be overcomers. And I believe it's the same thing for our nation, that God wants uh, our nation 
to be strong again, to be an overcoming nation, to be a nation that represents God and all that he represents. And so that's what I believe God for. I want to share um, some scriptures with you. And uh, let's see, I'm going to start in um, Deuteronomy chapter 31. And we're talking about discouragement. And I just want to use the Israelites as um, as an example of being discouraged. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verses 6 through six through um, 9. I'm going to read that. God told uh, the Israelites, he said, Be strong and of a good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. And this message is called, Don't Be, Discour Don't be Discouraged, the Lord is with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. I know right now it can seem like the Lord has just forsaken our nation, but he has not. He has not because he said he, he would not. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of a good courage, for you must go with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. Verse 8, and the, Lord, and the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. That word dismayed, it also means discouraged. So God is telling them here, he said, the Lord says, I will be with you. I believe that the Lord is with us. He's with us now. He's with us even during this pandemic. He's with us during all of the, during all of this chaos. He says, he will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. That's what that's what I want to tell you today. Do not fear nor be dismayed or, to, or be discouraged. And um, in verse 23, I'm going to go down to verse 23. He tells him again. Verse 23, he says, Then he inaugurated Joshua the son of Nun and said, Be strong and of a good courage, for you shall bring the children of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with you. God always tells his people, he's telling, he told the Israelites here, he's telling you, he's telling me, no matter what we're going through, no matter what is going on, he says, be strong and of a good courage. You know, when I first uh, saw these scriptures, you know, years back, I was very comforted because, um, you know, coming from a, a culture where, Women are typically uh, soft and, you know, dainty and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I was glad to see these scriptures. I took these scriptures for myself and I, I took them as a believer, not as a female, not as a woman, but as a believer. And, you know, um, there have been times in my life where I felt like I was alone and I needed these scriptures. I needed to know that God was with me, that he was telling me to be strong and of a good courage. And guess what? That strengthened me. When I believed him, that strengthened me. Amen. I'm, I want us to look at um, Numbers 21, if you have Numbers 21. This is uh, the people uh, of Israel. Verse 21, I'm going to read verses 4 and 5. And it says, then they journey from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water and our soul loathes this worthless bread. The, um, the amplified version of verse 4, I'll read the second part, to go around the land of Edom, and the people became impatient, depressed, much discouraged because of the trials of the way. Well, right now we are 
experiencing great trials and great hardship, hardships. And these verses tell us that as the people of God go through hard times and uh, trials and, and tests and temptations, that we can become discouraged. Discouraged, not encouraged, but discouraged. I want to read uh, the dictionary definition of encourage. It means to inspire with courage. It means spirit or confidence. To inspire with courage, spirit, or confidence. It means to strengthen. The word discourage, it means to deprive of courage or hope or confidence. It means to weaken. And so what I want to uh, just encourage you today is these are times uh, of great discouragement, but it's up to you and it's up to me that we make sure that we stay encouraged in the Lord. That's why it's so important for us to know the word of God. It's so important for us to know the ways of God, because when things happen, when things are really hard, we have to make sure we don't become discouraged or to, that means to weaken. Uh, the enemy wants us to be weakened and we cannot be weakened. We have to believe God and trust in God that the Lord is with us. He, he said, you be strong. You be of a good courage. Be, just be it. Don't try it, just be it. And just by being something, when God tells you that you are something or that you can do something or that you can be something, then we are supposed to stand up um, and prove that what God has called us, that's what we are. When God calls us something, when he tells us to do something, when we, when we stand up and do it, it's his job. It's God's responsibility to take care of the rest. So if we just, if we just purpose to be strong, I'm going to be strong. I'm not going to be weak. I'm not going to fall apart while all this COVID-19 and all this unrest in our nation and the uncertain uncertainties of what we're uh, seeing and living in. You know, we don't know whether we're going to have a job next week or or, uh, or, you know, or be sick next week, you know, uh, so believers are going through a whole bunch of things. But the, the, but the truth is, nobody can make you be discouraged but you. Nobody can make you be discouraged but you. Now, you can be tempted to be discouraged. You can be tempted to be deprived of courage or to be deprived of hope or to be deprived of confidence or to, or to be weakened. So we have to be careful not to be discouraged because it's going to weaken us. But discouragement doesn't have any power over us until we begin to speak it, until we begin to speak it. In Numbers 21, I'll go back there, Numbers 21 and verse 5, and it says, And the people spoke against God and against Moses. So their discouragement, in verse 4, caused them to speak the wrong things. Come on now. We're, not, we're supposed to make sure that we don't use our mouths to sin against God. And so when we are discouraged, we have to make sure that we don't confess or say anything that is against God. Because God is a good God. He says, you be strong. And you be courageous. And he said, then I, I will be with you. I, I, will, I will strengthen you. Yea, I will deliver you. Amen. So we have to trust in the Lord. I want to, um, I want for us to look at um, the best one, uh, a good example of being discouraged or not being discouraged would be David. Now, maybe you've, you've probably heard the story of David in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verses 1 through 6, where the Amalekites, they burned down um, David and his men. They were away at war, and the Amalekites came and burned down the city of Ziklag, to, burned it down to the ground, took their women, took their children, and took all their stuff. And so they had just come back 
from, from fighting. And um, so when they came back, um, the, the men that were with David and David himself, they became discouraged because of what had happened. They were like, wow, we, we, we've been away. We came back and all of our stuff, all of our people, all of our women and children are gone. That, how, many, how many of you know that is a very discouraging uh, scenario? And, and, so, and it says that the men who uh, faithfully fought with David, suddenly they turned on him. Now, these were men who fought with him faithfully, and they trusted in him. They wanted him to be, you know, in front of them and to be their leader. Now, all of a sudden, they go through this thing where everybody's gone and their town is wiped out. And now, the very men who trusted in him, who fought with him, who stuck with him through thick and thin, now they decided they were going to turn on him and they wanted to kill him. Um, and they wanted to take this out on David. So David, he found himself all alone, all alone. How many leaders am I, am I talking to right now? How many leaders of you out there have been in a position where you felt all alone? where it seemed like everybody was against you, where it seemed like everybody left you, they walked away from you, and you were stuck by yourself. Amen? And uh, all of a sudden, you weren't their favorite person. Well, David found himself all alone. Amen? But let's look at what David did, and this is what you and I have to do. When we are discouraged, we have to do what David did. Let me, let me um, I want to read a couple of scriptures to you to, to let you know what discouragement sounds like. Proverbs 38, 17, it says, For I am ready to fall, and my sorrow is continually before me. That's what discouragement sounds like. Let's look at um, Jeremiah 45 and 3. This is what discouragement sounds like. You said, Woe is me now. For the Lord has added grief to my sorrow. I fainted in my sighing, and I find no rest. That is what discouragement sounds like. But guess what? That's not the kind of talk we're supposed to be talking. We're supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to be talking like Psalm 42, verse 11. It says, why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Then it says, hope in God, I shall yet praise him. So we're not supposed to um, get to a point where we allow our discouragement to talk for us. We're supposed to say what God says. We're supposed to speak the word of God. So we should be sitting around saying, I don't know whether I'm going to be working next week or not. I don't know um, how I'm going to feed these kids. Uh, I don't know if I'm, you know, everybody at work has COVID-19. Uh, now I'm going to get COVID-19. That's not, that is discouragement talking. That is not what you're supposed to be saying. That, those words are going to discourage you. Those words and those confessions are going to zap all the strength of the Lord out of you. And so we have to make sure that our, uh, uh, temptation to be discouraged doesn't cause us to speak the wrong things because we will reap the words that we release into the earth, into heaven and earth, listens to all of our words and all of our commands. So we have to make sure we're using our words to do the right things and to produce the right results. So back to David of 1 Samuel 30, uh, uh, it says, um, that David, it, he encouraged himself. It appears that he had, it appeared as though he had lost everything. How many of you, you're in a situation or point in life right now with all that's going on that you feel like that you've lost everything? But guess what? You can't continue to say that. That's not the confession that you should be making. It, you, need, you need to get faith and the angels and the power of God and the grace of God working on your behalf 
You need to attract the anointing of God into your life. Those negative words, they're not going to attract what you want. They're, they're not going to attract. This is the new era of restoration. Uh, uh, let me see. There's a, a recovery, restoration, new beginnings. This is the a, the new age of being God, where God is resetting things. That's why it, it seems like God isn't doing anything. But in the spiritual realm, he is doing something. He is recalibrating things. He is going to reset things. He is going to uh, recover things. He is going to cause us to be restored. He is the one that's going to cause us to have new beginnings. Amen. He is the one. God is the one that's going to cause us to be new wineskins. Amen. And so uh, it, even though it looked like David and his men had lost everything, it says in verse 6 of 1 Samuel 30 that David encouraged himself. David encouraged himself. We have to encourage ourselves. And that's why it's so important to have a relationship with God, not just being saved not just being born again, but having a, a working relationship where we have, um, for lack of a better term, we have tried and tested the Lord. We have tried and tested his word and, and found out that he's faithful to his word and he's faithful to keep his promises. Amen. You know, the scripture says that God is not slack concerning his promises as some can count slackness. No, if anything, God is long suffering. In other words, he's waiting for us. God is waiting for us because he wishes that no man perish. He wants everybody to be recovered. And so it's not, it's not God. God is not the problem. And so we have to be careful that when things happen in our lives, we have to be careful what we're saying, the confessions that we're making. We have to say things that attract the word of God and attract the power of God into our lives. We have to um, confess words, not be discouraged, um, not give the enemy any place to operate in our lives. The enemy, his, his plan and his tactic is to get us to confess things that allow him entrance into our lives. Just like Job, he allowed fear to let the enemy into his life. He said, the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. And so we, the last thing we want to do is confess things that we do not want. God has called us to call things that be not as though they were, not to call things as they are. They already are that way. If we want things to change, then we're going to have to speak and we're going to have to say something else. Let me get back to David. So David encouraged himself. Perhaps David said uh, what he said in Psalm 20 and verse 7. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. I'm, 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 um, I'm re, um, what do you call it? I'm um, ad-libbing this particular scripture. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord. Amen. Psalm 27, 1, David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So David was encouraging himself. It doesn't say what he said, but we know that whatever he said, he encouraged himself, which also means he strengthened himself. So when you encourage somebody, you strengthen them. And, and it really helps. Uh, we, um, as believers, we've, we have Romans 8.31 that says, uh, one of many verses, but it says, if God be for me, who can be against me? So we don't have to be concerned. We don't have to be fearful about what the government's going to do, what our boss is going to do, what COVID-19 is going to do. We can say that um, if God be for me, who can be against me? If God is on my side, what can anybody do to me? Because God is on my side. He is protecting me. He's covering me. He's garrisoning me. He is, he is, um, he is uh, um, supporting me. God is providing for me. Amen. And so, and so David must have encouraged himself. He probably encouraged himself. I'm sure he did. Look, 
God was with me when I when I tackled that bear. God was with me when I tackled that lion. God was with me when I tackled the giant Goliath. And so God is with me even now. And so David encouraged himself by remembering all the things, I'm sure, that the Lord had done for him and how God had uh, caused him to be victorious in, in every er area of his life. David was a great warrior. He was a great psalmist. And, um, and, uh, and so he knew that God was for him and, and not against him. So what else did David do? Number one, David encouraged himself, number one, in verse six. And then David, in verse eight, it says that David prayed and he inquired of the Lord. What do we do? When we get discouraged, what do we do when we're in a situation where I don't know what to do? Lord, this is the first time I've been through this. I've never been this way before. Uh, this has never happened to me before. But I'm telling you, Lord, this, this looks pretty discouraging. But I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you, God, that you have the solution. You know, the Bible tells us in James that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And God will give it to you liberally. He won't make you feel bad or ashamed for asking him for an answer or asking him for wisdom. But he's going to give it to you liberally. But guess what? You have to ask in faith. You can't waver. You can't be wishy-washy. You can't ask God for an answer and then decide that he's not going to answer you or decide that he doesn't have the answer. Amen. So David prayed in verse 8. He, and he inquired of the Lord. Amen. Psalm 34, 4, it says, I prayed to the Lord. This is David. He said, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me and freed me from all my fears. The Lord wants us to pray, not be discouraged. He wants us to pray and inquire of him and ask him, Lord, what am I supposed to do right now? What move, what's my next move? Am I supposed to just lay low? Am I supposed to stand still and see the uh, uh, deliverance of the Lord? Or am I, or, or are there steps of faith that you want me to take, Lord, that's going to get me out of uh, or get me through this discouraging situation? Amen. And again, that it, that it doesn't matter whether it's a job or a, or a, a house or or what a relationship God wants to give you an answer so David he sought the Lord's direction through prayer amen and it's, and he said again I prayed to the Lord and he answered me and he freed me from all my fears God wants to free us from all of our fears right now everybody God doesn't want us to fall prey to to the enemy I want I want to um I'm kind of jumping to the end, but um, I, I want to make this point before uh, we finish with David. Um, I want you to consider um, the enemy. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, it talks about not letting Satan have the advantage over us and not to be ignorant of his devices. That word devices, it comes from the Greek word, Greek word, noema, noema. It devices, it means evil purposes. It means thoughts. It means mental perception, perception. And so we're not to be ignorant of Satan's evil purposes. We're not to be ignorant of the thoughts that he gives us. We're not to be ignorant of the mental perception that he tries to uh, get us to adopt and to speak out uh, in the open and, and trigger the demonic activity that he wants to, and the chaos that he wants to start in our lives. And so, and so I want you to ask yourself after, you know, after we're finished here and and, you know, tonight, tomorrow, over the next few days, I want you to ask yourself, if you were the devil, what would I tell me? If I was the devil, what would I tell me? 
to cause me to be defeated? What would I say to me? You know, we, we're, we're supposed to know ourselves. And so to know how the enemy would attack you and try to and and try to discourage you so you so that you can make bad confessions that would allow him to operate in your life then you need to start thinking if if you were him what would you tell yourself what would you make you think what would you cause people to say to you what would you have your husband do um you know what um what thought patterns, what, what, um, what things in our past would we remind ourselves of to get us to be discouraged and to give up and to quit? If you were the enemy, what would you do and say to you to make you defeated and to cause you to be discouraged? That's something you need to think about. You know what? Because we, we know ourselves better than anyone. We know the things that, we're, um, um, that we still feel guilty about, even though God has forgiven us. We, we know things in our past, even though nobody else remembers, including God. You know, what things would we say to us to really, to really stick that knife in, to really get us good? And we need to think about those things. And we need to keep track of those things and purpose that I am not, you will not allow the en enemy to use those tactics and to use those thought devices to get you to be discouraged so that you will use your own mouth and use your own words to speak against God and to speak against your situation. Amen. I just want to give you that to think about. In Philippians 4, 6, and 7, so, so David, he, uh, he encouraged himself. He built himself up. That's what we have to do. We have to build ourselves up in the, in the word. If God be for me, who can be against me? Um, uh, God, loved, God loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son. Hey, God has given me the power to get wealth to establish his covenant. All, covenant, all the good things, all the scriptures that we know. Amen? Um, we can say, um, God... Um, your kingdom come and your will be done. Your will be done is going to be done in my life. Your kingdom is going to come in my life today and every day in Jesus name. And so David encouraged himself by the, the history that he had with God. We have to bring in the history that we have with God. Who were we before we got saved? What has he delivered us from? What has he forgiven us from? What has he walked us through? These are the things we have to bring our history, the history of us and God back into the picture to get us through this current situation of discouragement. Amen. So David, he encouraged himself because nobody else was. Nobody else was there. And so right now we're in our houses. Some of you in the house, in your houses, some of you are living alone. Well, you need to encourage yourself. This is not the time to feel sorry for yourself. This is not the time to be discouraged because it will weaken you. And God wants you to be strengthened. Uh, um, Ephesians says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You are not alone. Amen. You are not alone. Um, um, I heard uh, some someone say one time that um, God is not afraid of your weakness. God is not afraid of my weakness. God is not afraid of our inability to produce results. That's why when he told Paul, he said, Paul, when he sought the Lord in Corinthians, that, the, that this uh, uh, messenger of Satan was sent to buffet him, he said, Lord, take this thing. He said, I asked you three times, are you going to take this thing away from me or not? The Lord told him, my grace is sufficient for you. Amen. God's grace is sufficient for you, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. So in other words, God is not afraid of your weakness. God is not afraid, men of God, of your ability to produce results. Because you're not God, and you need God just like anybody else needs God. And if we were to say that we don't need God, we are lying, and we are fooling ourselves. And so 
we we need God. We need God right now. We need to trust in God right now. We need to say what God says right now, right now. That's what we need because we don't want to be discouraged. Amen. And so he, he sought the Lord's direction through prayer and the Lord told him, he said, go and fight and I will be with you and you will win. And that chapter of first Samuel 30, it says, David got back all of their stuff. Look, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what you've lost. It doesn't matter what you've lost during this COVID-19. It doesn't matter what you've lost. If you believe God, if you stay encouraged, if you don't allow the enemy or circumstances to discourage you, you are going to recover all. Talking about Job, God gave him twice as much as what he had before. So God can cause us to recover. And so, you know, let's just chill. Things aren't going the way we think, but let's say the right words. Let's encourage ourselves. Let's attract the grace of God. God said, even in your struggles, Paul, even in your ability, inability to pr produce results, my grace is sufficient for you because my strength is made perfect in weakness, not just weakness, but your weakness and my weakness. Amen. So that's simply just humbling ourselves and trusting God. Uh, um, Philippians 4, 6. Uh, before I say that, ask and I will answer. God has said in his word, ask and I will answer. James 1, 5 and 6, we talked about that. Uh, God told us to ask God, ask God for wisdom and he'll give it to us. Amen. Um, 1 John 5, 14, it says that the conf we can have confidence in God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, then we know that we have the petition that we asked of him. And so we can ask the Lord. Amen. Uh, James 4, 2 says you have not because you ask not. And so the Lord wants us to ask him. He wants to give us answers for this season in our lives. Uh, we don't have to just lay and play dead and just take anything that comes to us. No, we can, we can ask God. God can give us a strategy. We have to always remember to trust God because God has the big picture. God is at, he has the, the perfect, God has the perfect uh, view of your life and my life. He can see, he can see the hidden things. He can see the traps that the enemy has for us. He, so God can give us strategy that's going to get us through every situation. Acts in, in Acts 28, 15, it says that Paul thanked God. Well, Paul uh, came together and some brethren came, came together and met with him. And it says that Paul thanked God because of his brethren, uh, his uh, his brethren, I'm sure, were encouraging him. And it says he thanked God and he took courage. Come on, everybody. Today, we need to start taking courage. That word take is the same word as in, as is in Mark 11, chapter 24, where whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. That word receive is the same word here. Lambano. It means to take. So Paul said he took courage courage. It's up to you and it's up to me that when it, when we are tempted to be discouraged, that instead of being discouraged and saying what the devil wants us to say, we need to take courage. We need to stand up. We need to be strong. We need to be very courageous. Why? Because God is with us. He said, I will not leave you or forsake you. Amen. And so the Lord wants us to, to win. Some Say that with me. Said the Lord wants me to win. Say the Lord has planned for me to win. The, say this. The Lord has made a way for me to win. Say this. The Lord is calling me and reminding me to be encouraged and not discouraged. Say in Jesus' name, right now, I take courage. I use my own will to take courage 
and to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So come on, everybody. Let's be like David. Let's be like David. Let's trust the Lord. Let's always be ready to encourage ourselves. Again, if you're living alone, you need to encourage yourself. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Do not have a pity party. This is the time to encourage yourself, to encourage yourself. And as we encourage ourselves, the strength of God is going to kick in and he is going to help us to keep moving forward. He is going to help us to keep maintaining a good confession. He is going to cause us, his strength is going to kick in and he's going to cause us to have the ability to be bold, to be confident, to speak the things of God, to speak the word of God and believe and know that God is faithful to his word. Amen. And he is faithful to his promises. So I just wanted to encourage you today. Amen. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Look, when you pray, just be specific with God. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you want. Ask him what you should ask for. Ask him what you should want. And so that he can direct you and so that you can ask him for the same things. But don't be anxious. Don't be worried. God is for you and God is not against you. God is with you. He has not left you. Just because you feel like God has left you doesn't mean that God has left you. Because look, come on, you're going to have to be the liar. You're going to have to be the one not, tell, not telling the truth because God cannot lie. It's impossible for God to lie. So if he tells us, he says, be strong and uh, be of a good courage. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you. When God says in his word, I will be with you, that means you are going to win. That's what he's telling you. When he told them, I'm not going to be with you. Don't go fight that fight because I'm not going to be with you. And when he would say that, they would lose. But when God said, look, don't worry, don't be concerned, just stand your ground, I'm with you. That meant God was going to cause them to have victory. And it wasn't going to be their horses or their chariots. It was going to be their obedience. But it was going to take God to cause them to win. Amen. The Lord is with you, everybody. Well, Father, we just thank you and praise you. And Father, I pray today. Uh, if you're if you're uh, listening under the sound of my voice, um, I I I, um, I want to pray a prayer with you. If you're not born again, or if you want to rededicate your life, I'd love to. Uh, I want to pray this prayer with you. So can you repeat after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Lord Jesus, I believe that I'm a sinner and that I need a savior. Say, Lord Jesus. I also believe <coughs> that when you died, you went to the grave. But I also believe that God the Father in three days raised you from the dead to live forever, victorious, so that I could sit here today and get born again, rededicate my life to live forever with you. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you now to come into my heart, come into my life, be my Lord, be my Savior, be my master. Say, devil, you can no longer fool me, trick me, harass me, distract me, discourage me, because today I have a new Lord and his name is Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart and coming into my life. I am born again. Hallelujah. If that was you, glory to God. I'm so excited for you. Welcome to the family of God, if that was you. If you rededicated your life, welcome back in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's time for tithes and offerings. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We've, we've been in the word of God, and now we're going to worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. You know, uh, giving is worship, and worship 
is giving. Amen. And so uh, this is the time that we honor the Lord with our, um, uh, the tithe means 10th. It means 10% of all of our income. And so, uh, so we're going to honor the Lord with our tithe. Um, uh, God told, told us in Malachi chapter 3, he said, when you bring the tithe into the storehouse, that there'll be meat in my house. He says, prove me now in this thing. Prove me now herewith if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out the, the blessing. So, Father, thank you. Um, excuse me. So, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. And we also bring a, a seed. We offer the Lord a seed today. We sow a seed. We, we bring an offering. As God says in Malachi chapter 3. And, of course, we know that the Bible says that what you sow is what you reap. Amen. Jesus, Jesus said that it's more blessed to give than to receive. The enemy and the world says to keep and to hoard if you want to receive or if you want to keep what you have. But that's not God's principles. God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will men give into your bosom. How many of us are or we're around men sometime? But even if we're even if we're not leaving the house, we have the mailbox. Somebody, a man, a man or a woman, some human has to mail us something. And so when, as we give, God is able to cause men, meaning anybody, any human, will cause men to give to us in the way of our harvest. And so, Father, we just thank you. We praise you. There are three ways to give. Number one, you can give online uh, by going to lfccnj.com forward slash giving. That's online giving, lfccnj.com forward slash giving. The second way to give is text to give by texting LFCCNJ to um, 77977. The third way to give is to mail in your tithe and offering to 2323 Route 73 in Pensacola, New Jersey, 08110. Amen. You can also, Living Faith members, you can drive by the church and drop in your tithe and offering that way. And, um, and that's, still, that's still open to do. We're open Tuesday through um, Thursday. Amen. We're open Tuesday through Thursday. Right now, we're open from 10 to 4, Tuesday through Thursday. Amen? And so those are three ways to give. The fourth way that is to bring your um, tithe in, uh, to run it past the building. Amen? And so uh, we present God with his tithe and his offerings. Uh, I have our Living Faith Tithes and Offering Confession. So Living Faith, watch, why don't you repeat this with me? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, in obedience to your word, in Malachi chapter 3, I want to see if you can just keep up. Hebrews chapter 7 and Matthew 23, 23. We come before you and before Jesus, our great high priest, to worship you as we bring the tithe and an offering. LFCC is our storehouse, chosen by you for us, where you've placed your name and where your spirit leads. Heavenly Father, we remember that we were in darkness. Somebody say we were in darkness and slaves to sin, but we called on the name of the Lord Jesus and you delivered us and brought us into the kingdom of God. We acknowledge that, um, okay, I lost my place. We were in darkness, slaves to sin, but we called on the name of the Lord Jesus and you delivered us and brought us into the kingdom of God. We acknowledge that you are our provider and our source, not our jobs, because we might not have one, nor our bank accounts, because they have zero dollars, nor the government, but you, Father, through Christ Jesus. Therefore, we are no longer limited. I said limited by the world's economic system, inflation, economic depression, poverty, lack, debt, nor any other part of the curse has power over us anymore. We thank you that the windows of heaven are open unto us because we are tithers and givers and because that's what your word tells us to do. Therefore, you rebuke the devourer for our sakes and we believe we receive the blessing from heaven when now, right now, as we pray and make this confession, 
In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Get ready to see the blessing come flowing into your life. God is faithful. Amen. Well, living faith, I've um, I've got a um, couple announcements here. Number one, July tw 25th, it, that we're calling that, um, I call it the drive-by. Uh, we're having a drive-by from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday, July uh, 25th. Uh, and from, uh, from 12 to 1, um, anybody who wants to come by, you're just going to circle around the building, come around, and we're all, me and the leaders, we're all going to wave to you and um it's going to be it's going to be fun it's going to be great to see everybody uh, we, we can't take long but um, we have to get it all done in an hour but i'd love to see your face in that parking lot amen so that's july 25th also remember we are not we are not participating in any second round of COVID 19. say that with me we are not participating in any resurgence of COVID-19, I'm not participating. I'm not participating. You're not participating. Amen? So I don't care. I don't care what's coming around the bend. I'm not participating. As far as we're concerned, everybody, that doesn't apply to us. It didn't apply to us the first time around. Isn't that right? So don't think that the second time around with the resurgence of COVID-19, no, that doesn't mean we're not, part, we're not participating. I'm not participating. It's, it doesn't mean anything to me. Amen? Because I'm still trusting God that I'm protected. I plead the blood of Jesus over me. Amen? I plead the blood of Jesus over, over my body, over my house, over my immune system, over all that belongs to me, all that I possess. I plead the blood of Jesus. You need to plead the blood of Jesus over yourself um, regularly. Amen? We are not participating in the resurgence of COVID-19. I just wanted to, to uh, just remind you of that. Amen? No, we're not. We're not doing that. <laughs> We're not doing that. Um, another thing I want to, uh, if, again, if you want to, I hope you're still praying for our nation. There's a prayer on our Facebook page. There's a prayer that I um, wrote out for us to pray for our nation. Uh, you can still uh, 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 sign on to firewallusa.com and sign up if you want to cover our nation along with um, Firewall USA and um uh, Patricia uh, King, I think is her last name. Uh, she, the Lord led her for to for the saints to cover the United States in prayer from now, uh, at least till election day. Amen. Keep praying for our president. Uh, look, we pray for our president not because you know we we pray for our president because the scripture says so that we might live a peaceable life. So. When you don't pray for our president, when we don't pray for our president, any president who's in office, we are undermining our very peaceful lives. And so we're responsible for praying for all men and for those who are in authority. Amen. And that includes our president. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, that's all the announcements I have. I just want to uh, just... Um, encourage you don't be discouraged remember everything go back and remember every time God brought you through if you think God's never brought you through anything well then let this be the time amen maybe you just got born again yesterday I don't know but even if you did just get born again God bought you from all your sin he he he, he brought you from all your sin amen that's something to talk about Amen. And that's something to be grateful for. And so just remember all that God has done for you. Amen. And lastly, with that, I know I usually say we're blessed, happy, fortunate. But now I want to tell you now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So let the Lord God of hope. I hope in God. My hope comes from the Lord. My hope is in the Lord. My earnest 
excited expectation is in the Lord, and yours should be also. Amen. Well, I call you blessed, happy, fortunate, empowered to prosper, and to be envied, because God already said it in Jesus' name. So let's agree with God and say, I am blessed. Amen. All right. See you soon.